Welcome to this video training on the Frog Street Infant Program. My name is Jody Martin. I'm the Vice President of Education and Training. You have a very important role as an infant teacher. You're teaching children during the most important years of their lives. Understanding how to optimize that learning is critical and you will help to do this by implementing the Frog Street Program. We have a wonderful program to teach children. It's comprehensive, it's enriched, and it has all the tools you need. We have promised the parents that we would deliver this program to their children, and it is what differentiates us from other schools. Before we begin to look specifically at the curriculum, I want to mention that the well-being of the children is a priority before the curriculum comes into play. The first thing to take into consideration is creating a safe environment both physically and emotionally. Let's look at the physical environment. This is when you supervise closely, you make sure toys are in good repair, the baby safe, you baby safe your room by installing latches on cabinets and drawers, you sanitize those toys and surfaces daily. You're using a small object tester to make sure there are no choking hazards. You follow proper bottle labeling protocol when storing and serving bottles, and you provide plenty of space for crawling and tummy time. You keep diaper pails, trash cans, cleaning supplies out of reach of children, and you make sure those crib sides and feeding trays are locked into place at all times. Be sure water temperature is safe for little ones. As you probably are aware, there are many other things as well to keep your environment safe. I also want to look at the emotional environment. Emotional safety means that you speak in low and kind voices in a loving and gentle way. This is what we call a nurturing environment where the children and families feel safe. You're the secondary source of attachment when parents are at work and, bo and both the babies and parents need to develop that special trust in you. Emotional coaching is important as well. It's important to be aware of children's emotions and recognize this is an opportunity to connect. You'll want to listen with empathy and help children to name their emotions while at the same time setting limits and finding good solutions. Nutrition is an important part of a safe environment. In order to encourage healthy eating habits in children, you'll want to sit and talk with them while they're eating. Make that feeding time a special time. Help them to use a spoon or a cup and try new finger foods. And model those good manners when you can. This is a great bonding and learning time for children. Parent partnerships are a very important uh, responsibility um, for you as a caregiver. Parents are your partners and two-way communication is um, is the goal to having a successful partnership. You can verbally communicate during drop-off and pick-up if possible, but completely recording in your life cubby is very important. Be sure to take pictures, tag them with objectives, and represent what is on the lesson plan in your message about the child's day. This represents you as the teacher in that classroom. This is how our families will know that you followed the lesson plan and you provided the learning you planned for in your lesson plan. Recording the milestones a child makes is a very precious gift for parents when they aren't able to see them, you know, firsthand throughout the day. Also be sure and share the parent letters available at the Frog Street curriculum on the planning and assessment CD. Each letter offers important tips and strategies as well as practical activities that parents can do to enhance their child's development. Okay, now let's get down to the nitty-gritty about the curriculum. The Frog Street curriculum is for six-week-olds to 18-month-olds. Some of you may only have up to 15-month-olds in your um, infancy classroom, but it does go through 18 months. And it's built on the same key cornerstones as the Frog Street Pre-K and Toddler. It's based on early brain development research, the de developmental domains, which as you know are physical, social, emotional, cognitive, and communication. It's, it's based around intentional instruction from you as the caregiver. And it, there's definitely an emphasis on social and emotional development, as you know how important that is in the early years. We're going to discuss, discuss each of these cornerstones in more detail in the next two slides. So this is features and benefits of the program, and this is always good for you to be able to speak um, with the parents about what, what kind of a program you have in, in your classroom. One of the features of the Frog Street Infant Program is, uh, is early brain development is addressed, and that creates a foundation for learning, as we all know. 
The intentional instruction I mentioned a moment ago, a moment ago optimizes that learning. Child development tips and strategies and scenarios are built into the curriculum, and that's really ongoing professional development for you as the caregiver. There's a focus on the caregiver and child interactions. As you know, that helps develop both language and social emotional skills when there's a good interaction um, happening between you and the children. There's age appropriate activities, which cover a wide range of ages and abilities. So you may have a younger infant that really is more advanced in their gross motor skills so that you can meet the child at their level. There's some parent components that involves families for consistency and routine and practices because that's so very important to have that connection for the children to make it easy to transition into their day with us. And the curriculum is bilingual. It provides support for both English and Spanish learners, and it offers vocabulary when we know the brain is being wired for second language so such a, at a, such an early age. Let's talk a little bit more about each of these cornerstones. When we're looking at brain development, early brain development, what we know is that the brain is two and a half times more active than it will be in the future. In the first three years of life, the brain builds an estimated 1,000 trillion synapses through the experiences it encounters. That is the activities you provide. Experience wires the brain. Experience forges those connections in the brain and repetition strengthens them. And that's why we do activities more than once until the child masters them. Brain complexity is dependent on interaction, inter interaction between the genes and the environment. Um, human development is shaped by both nature, which is biology, and nurture, which is the experience in the environment. Cells wire for social interaction and empathy by four months. Human interaction is necessary for this to happen. Brain development is nonlinear. There are times when the brain is able to wire specific skills at optimal levels. And these times are what we call windows of opportunity. We'll see a slide on that in a moment. Under intentionality, another cornerstone is learning is wired in domains. As I mentioned, the physical, social, emotional, communication, and cognitive. As the teacher, you focus on the developmental domains as well as the windows of opportunity. Adaptations support learning for all abilities and ages. The intentional teacher knows how to accommodate individual differences with personality styles, temperaments, and learning styles. And then continuums accelerate learning. So an intentional caregiver focuses on activities with specific outcomes or goals in mind for children's mm -hmm. developmental learning. And then focus on social emotional development. Frog Street does such a great job on that um, by introducing the brain smart way to start the day. And to start the day, the brain smart way is to unite by singing with others, calm by stretching and laughing, to connect by acknowledging friends that are absent and welcoming them back, and then commit for older infants, 15 to 18 months, is to place their picture in a safekeeper box. And those are the, uh, the brain smart ways to start the day. Let's look at the individual components of the Frog Street curriculum. If you have your welcome guide close at hand, you can open it to page four, and we will be looking at each of these components, and they'll be shown during this presentation as well, but if you have your welcome guide, you might want to follow along as well. There's 264 activity cards, there's 10 activity pocket sheets, 24 photo cards, 16 board books, 12 classroom posters, a plush puppet, which is Lily, <coughs> manipulatives, there's three music CDs with the storage case, pattern CD, and the planning and assessment CD. Page four shows you the complete set of curriculum. It's pretty impressive. There's a lot of stuff there. And then pages five through seven shows you the individual components, which with an explanation. I would recommend looking at these pages more closely after the training just to make sure that you have all the components you need in your classroom. So this is the activity cards. Well, once again, there's 264 of them. The core of the program centers around those activity cards and they're created um, around those four developmental domains. You can see the four different colors here that represent the different domains. The 
Red cards are cognitive activities. The blue cards are language activities. The yellow cards are social emotional car activities. And then the green cards are the physical activities. This green card represents a physical development domain. And as you can see, the activity helps to for children to rock and roll and crawl. This card rep represents an activity for a child who's between zero and three months, as you can see in the upper right hand corner. So each of these cards has different um, icons or symbols that help you understand what the card is bringing to light. So the first card we saw was green, so you know it was a physical activity. This is a yellow one, it's social emotional, but in addition you can see in the right hand corner it's for your youngest infants. There's 66 cards per domain, and each domain includes activities appropriate for four age ranges. So each card has a unique alpha numeric label in that left-hand corner. The letter represents the domain, so this is SE, which is social-emotional, and the number identifies the card's place in the 66 cards for each domain, so it's about 25th in line, so about middle of the road for a 6 to 12 month old. The lower the number, the more appropriate the activity is for the youngest learners. The top paragraph with the butterfly icon represents a best practice or a proven strategy or a teaching tip. This is built in professional development for you. It's a really easy way for you to just get a quick tidbit of information that might help you um, do so, an interaction with the child or be able to um, complete that ac activity more effectively. Materials to gather. There's some materials required to do an activity and they're underlined within the activity direction. So as you can see here, the word shoe box off to the right and small toy are underlined. That helps you know what you need to gather to be able to do this activity with children. The directions for making the simple props are included in the Welcome to Frog Street infant and are signified by a scissors icon on the activity card. So you can see that in the bottom left hand corner. I believe that on page 54 to 55 is where you'll see the activities that can be made. You want to take note on that. Learning goals. Each activity is aligned to Frog Street Infant Learning Goals. The objectives on each card are aligned and you can see on the card on the left has a learning goal or an objective and it's going to align to a number that is on the learning goals page. And that can be found on your planning and assessment CD for those learning goal pages if you wanted to print out of it for you, for yourself. As you can see, these learning goals are what you will be assessing when you use the developmental checklist for parent-teacher conferences that are held in November and in May. Once again, you can find that on the planning and assessment CD. Activity pocket sleeves. You can select one activity card from each domain and slip all four cards in the activity pockets. Place a child's name at the top of the card to create an intentional and personalized plan to enhance development. You might find that you have a group of children. You can put all four or five, um, maybe all eight of their names at the top, and this is the activities that all children will be doing throughout the week. Depends on your group of children and where they are developmentally. So you can do those small groups of children on the same activity sleeve. And this is perfect for an at-a-glance reference and can be kept up for a week. Um, you can put cards on one side for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and then on the other side, the activities you'll be doing for Tuesday and Thursday, and you just need to flip them. And that gives you a variety. This activity planner will help you keep track of what activities you have provided for the, each child so throughout the year you have addressed all of them. You'll want to keep track to make sure because there's lots of different children and lots of different activities and in the different domains. So just making sure that you're giving a well-rounded educational experience. It might be helpful too to show the parents all the different activities that you've done with their child from one um, conference period to the next. There may be an easier way to access the activity cards if you don't want to keep them in the box um, or if you're unable to attach the activity sleeves to the wall. 
I've seen some schools that will put them in a binder and then use the binder like a little easel with the card that they're working on that morning showing so the parent can see that. It's up to you what works best in your classroom. Here's the literature library, which includes 16 board books. And they are illustrated, they have photographs, and they're bilingual. There's a variety of books in your literature library. Just be sure to highlight the book of the day or the week by displaying it in a location that's easy for you to access and for parents to see. We want them to know that we're reading with their children and they might be able to read the same book at home or to talk about the book in the car on the way home. These classroom posters are English on one side and Spanish on the other if you have both um, dual speaking parents. You can display these posters in a prominent place for the parents to see. Obviously, they're also for your edification, but it's really our attempt at helping parents understand child development um, and the various topics that we all know as experts, and we're, we're hoping to uh, relate to them as well. I would suggest changing these posters out regularly to keep them interesting for the parents to read. There's two versions to accommodate different age ranges. So there's a zero to 12 month and a 12 to 18 month. So depending on the group of infants that you're working with, you'll wanna make sure that you have the correct poster up so that the developmental milestones on each poster are reflective of the children in your care. These 24 photo activity cards are wonderful to use. Each card has things to say and do with non-speakers and speakers on the backside. So it's sort of a cheat sheet for you to be able to use when you're working with the children. And it has vocabulary to introduce and sign language to go with the picture. Definitely a great teaching tool. Don't forget Lily the plush puppet. I don't have a really good picture of her on these slides, but you do have her the cuddly version in your classroom. She's an integral part of your class. She can introduce stories or she can ask children questions. And she also participates in movement activities. There's no greater way to get children's attention than bringing out a cute puppet and using a different voice than your own to sort of get their attention and, and bring them closer to you to sit for a little story time. These are the manipulative pieces that came with your program. Please remove the drum and the tambourine um, as they both are not durable enough for groups of children, unfortunately. Use similar, more durable products that you already have, or that can be purchased by your DC. But once again, the drum and the little tambourine um, have, have been found to uh, break easily, and there's some small parts that may fall off. So make sure they're not in your classroom, um, that you give them to your DC if you find them, and that they're destroyed. The planning and assessment CD includes the developmental checklist, the learning goal sheets I mentioned earlier, the activity trackers, there's 24 parent letters, sign language poster, and anecdotal record forms. So the, the planning and assessment CD is something that your director of curriculum will probably keep in the office, but please make sure you have copies of all the forms that are on this CD. These will help you keep organized with information on each child and provide communication to your parents, which is so very important. And once again, the developmental checklist is something that you'll work on throughout the year to be ready for parent-teacher conferences. And also to help you plan your lessons and know where your group of children are developmentally so that you know what activity cards to pull. The pattern CD is um, fun and educational things you can make to help help you teach the concepts and skills in the curriculum. Your DC will probably keep this CD or have a binder of options for you to choose from. <clears throat> then of course you have your CDs. The baby song CD is in English and Spanish and then there's the baby games which is only in English. You want to make sure you have those three CDs in your classroom. So what are my curriculum expectations? I would expect that you have an awareness of all components, and now that you've been through this training, I have shown you all the various components, but once again, I would encourage you to go find them, let your DC know if you no longer have them or if they're damaged, um, because you'll want all the pieces for the program. Next, you'll want to make sure that you have some of these displayed each day to match the lesson that you'll be teaching. 
Of course, follow your lesson plan that's uploaded on your Life Cubby or posted on your bulletin board. Be sure and communicate what you have taught the children that day on their Life Cubby. This is what I find so often that you don't, what I call, toot your own horn. Be sure and explain in as much detail as you can, and I know you have a lot of maintenance kinds of things to do in the classroom, but that Life Cubby is a representation of what you've done with the child throughout the day. So be sure and be specific about your learning objectives, the milestones that the baby has achieved, and the things that you've enjoyed throughout the day. Take as many pictures of the children portraying the objectives that you have on your lesson plan so parents can see that you're following what you promised. Most of all, have fun and enjoy those precious children. Thank you.